see the Tibbles get his exercise, will you? Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, John. And John? Oh, he's gone. There's only me. Oh, you did say 8.30. Yes, well, he left at 8. I know. He wouldn't have waited on if you'd have been the President of the United States before getting rolled into one. Which I'm not. No. Good morning, visit. Morning, Lady Wilder. Thank you, sir. John's spending the weekend in town. I'm going urban, too. Well, I have to get my car back anyway, don't I? John's working all hours just now, since Caswell left for his winter holiday. Well, John's liable to take winter holidays at their peril. They usually come back to find there's been an avalanche. Oh, but Caswell's left for the sun. Forest fire, then. Don't I know it. <laughs> Poor Don. Well, you can't say you didn't know what you were coming back to. I'm not complaining. But regretting? Well, I... I have misgivings. You leave when it suits you. Not John. And no release clause in my contract. And I'm not sure that I want to invoke mine. This auditor that John's called in, is he important? Well, when he phoned John this morning, I could only assume he said tally ho. Well, he's just um, nosing something out for John. Caswell hasn't been fiddling the books. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's just John making hay while Caswell bakes in Barbados. What you might call absent frenzy. Oh, darling. <laughs> it's just a bit early in the morning. Ah. Oh, Caswell won't know the place when he gets back. It's crawling with auditors. John's having one of his hire and fire spasms. He's even got one of those high powered public relations gents setting about the Bly image. Or his? Or his. And the auditor on Caswell. <laughs> Five thousand pounds, eh? Yes, Sir John. For services rendered. There's no limit to what that might cover, is there, Davis? Anything from adultery to jailbreaking. It's a wonder to me that more of you chaps don't turn to religion. It's not for me to judge men, Sir John. Only their books. By their figures, ye shall know them. And knowing them, dig their graves, eh? Well, this might be what we're looking for. I want to know how many years... Yes? Mr. Packard is here, Sir John. Oh, ask him to come in, will you? I want to know how many years these payments have been made. As I said, Sir John, we can confirm the last three years, 63, 4 and 5. If you want us to go any further back... Yes, please. Oh, do come in, Geoffrey. And as soon as you can. The Auditor General? Uh, the grave diggers of commerce. Or detectives. Thank you. Either. They, they both dig. You merely scatter the beautiful flowers. If only public relations were as simple as that, John. John Henderson showed me just about everything worth seeing here yesterday. He could get a job with Cook's Tours if he ever left you. Look, uh, if... Um... If you're on your own, Pat could always come to town, do some shopping together. No, Dom, but thanks. Are you sure you won't come up? Well, you know what he thinks of meddlesome wives. No, just say I passed this way. Look, um, I have to stay late tomorrow. I could give you dinner. Oh, Dom, I'd love it. Well, that is if John doesn't... I only wish he did. No, Dom, you're marked safe. The best place in town. Now, we might go to... Uh... No, not the best. The noisiest, the most overcrowded. Barbados, did you say? Not even a suntan. Well, you didn't stay long enough. Well, bye, Pamela. Not long enough, if I know John, to stop the forest fire. Where are you taking that? Sir John's order, sir. We'll put it back where it was. Oh, uh, hello, Caswell. I thought you were... I know. That's right. Now leave it. Yes. 
Uh, Henderson, do you mind? Only Wilder would think of that. Oh, they probably taken it away for cleaning, Caswell. Or restoring, or whatever it is they did to bronze. Or to me. Now, don't you go beating me to his office, Henderson. He is in, I take it? Oh, yes, yes, but he's got a lot on at the moment. Yes, I've heard. The uh, best public relations, John, is not only done, it's not seen to be done. Well, never mind about blowing the trumpet for public relations. You blow it for Blyze. And for me. You'll see, nobody will even know it's happening. But Blyze will be you and you Blyze. They may see Blyze over the door, but they'll read Wilder. You make it sound like some confidence trick. No, John, only the truth. I wouldn't touch a client who wanted it otherwise. I mean, you are running, Blyze, let's face it. You didn't, I suppose, put it as bluntly to Kenneth when you meant it yesterday. No need. That's exactly as he sees it. Short term. Short term. His outlook is geared to three facts. His father's 58, you're 49. And he's 36, I know. He seems to have confessed all. With some vigor. And you were impressed. I wear two hats. One political, the other PR. Politically, I like modernizers. And you think that Kenneth is one? And you. I know my brief, John. Provided that you know your hats. Miss Lingard. Yes, Sir John. That uh, list of current projects for Mr. Packard, is it ready? Yes, Sir John. Shall I bring it in? Yes, thank you. It may give you something to go on. Our overseas contracts have increased 10% since I came. Uh, Sir John is engaged, Mr. Bly. Yes, Miss Lingard. Good morning, Caswell. Wilder. Oh, you know, uh, Jeffrey Packard, Caswell Bly. We met once at a mansion house dinner. I mean, one goes to so many. I'll uh, collect the material from your secretary, John. Oh, I can see myself now. Thank you, Jeffrey. Well, I won't ask why you're back. Is that him? Please don't talk in riddles. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. This special auditor of yours. Packard is not an auditor. The auditor's name is Davis. If you wish to make yourself known, he's on the seventh floor in a room next to Pickthorns. Don? Well, I haven't come back, back all the way from Barbados just to meet your auditor. Don, did you know that Caswell was back among us? Well, uh, yes, John, we met downstairs. Caswell... All the same. I think this is the person we may be uh, looking for. Look into it. Call him up. If he's not on the phone, go and see him. And let me know how you get on. Do you know somebody called Len Milton, Caswell? No. Should I? All right, Don. Was it the... Uh, Food that disappointed you, Caswell, or the weather? News. The company news. Well, we shall have to keep our... our carrier pigeons more under control. You'll never do that. Now, you know why I'm here. The moment I turn my back, you turn Blythe inside out. I've been away for six days. We meant it as a surprise for when you got back. We? Kenneth and I. Miss Lingard. Yes, Sir John. Would you ask Mr. Kenneth to come along here, please? You can ask him yourself, if you haven't already. I came here straight from London Airport. Now, whatever else Ken has agreed to, he's never agreed to those changes downstairs. Mm -hmm. The headstone is gone, and my bus was on its way. Was? Well, it's staying. You're a schoolboy, Wilder. You can't chop me, so you chuck my bus out of the main hall. Who are you fooling? I'm here to run a civil engineering firm, not a museum. Your father's headstone should be on his grave. I know all about this company history, Guff. He chiseled it out himself ten years before he died. It all started from a scratch on a piece of marble. Well, all that is past. 
And people do not want to be reminded of death every day. You don't. I suppose you know what you intend to put in its place? That. It's a map of Bly's place in the living world. Every project that we're engaged on. Oh, you're bleeping. It's better than a gravestone. And what are you thinking of putting in the place of my bust? Yours? I do not have your urge for two souls, Caswell, no. A three-dimensional model of the Cavandiri Dam. Our biggest world project. It's being made now. Hmm. This um, auditor, what is he prospecting for? Hidden gold? Oh, you're far too sensitive, Caswell. It's routine. I'm just making sure. The bank made sure before putting you in. I'm making doubly sure. Oh, come in, Kenneth. Morning, John. Brother, you're in Barbados. No, I'm not. Good morning. We wrote you last night, care of the airline. We? Ah, oh, no, Justine and I. Well, Justine. I added a PS. Saying what? Wishing you well. Saying nothing about the audit. The audit? Ah, well, it would only have spoiled your holiday. It did. It's a good thing I don't depend on you for news. Well, John's entitled. He's not entitled to imply that I'm feathering my nest out of Bly's cash. That's not what he's doing. Oh, what else then? You seem to know. Oh, I do. We know about your paper companies, Caswell. We know you are not milking Bly's. Thank you. But it's the, what you call it, the image that counts, isn't it? And when a special audit is called the day after I leave, what sort of image did that leave me with? Images are what public relations people talk about to keep themselves in work. It's a load of bunk. Well, all the same, you'll get rid of that auditor. He'll stay until he's finished. Well, do you second that? Well, kick out the auditor now. You'll really have the city holding its nose. Mm. So you were with him. Do you also agree with the changes he's made downstairs? What changes? Oh, he means about his bust. And the headstone. I concur, yes. Hmm. Like some trained pact. Well, there are still some men around this place with minds of their own. And they'll know where else the winds of change have been blowing in this company. And Wilder, nobody moves that bust. So, you concur about the bust. I didn't know we'd even discussed it. Don't push too hard, Wilde. You know very well I had to say that. I'm concerned that Father should go, and I don't care how soon. But I do care about the manner of his going. If you want your dirty work done by proxy, you don't frame the rules. I don't want any scandal about his wartime profits. Then why did you tell me about that? Oh, that was when we were fighting Billy Straker. I was indicating what sort of a man Straker was. And only incidentally indicating what sort of a man his wartime partner, your father, is? Uh, something like that. So now you approve of his war game. Contracts on a cost-plus basis. With a clerk of works fixed to overstate the materials used, the concrete and everything well, else. That's fast. That's over and done with. I also asked you not to delve. Not to persecute the clerk of works. Who's talking of persecution? I just want to ask him to dinner. that audit team was really about, they'd be out on their ears now. Image or no image. They're looking of things which might be of interest to the board of Bly Construction. They're looking for payments that might lead you to that clerk of works. Oh, that among other things. They're looking for dirt. Yes? Mr. Henderson's on the phone, Sir John. Oh, put him through, will you? Sit down, Kenneth. Hello, Don. That address, John, it's the local Tory party. Are you sure? Oh, yes. And this Len Milton is the local Tory agent. 
Yeah, I feel pretty damn silly asking those Tory Debs about a clerk of works. Was there nobody else, sir? No, John. Only Tories. This, um, Len Milton. Did you meet him? What was he like? The usual. Ex-major, moustache. Sort of keeps his uniform in mothballs until next time. He said Bly would know all about it. All right, Don. Come back. Well, it would appear that your father is another of these odd people who wears two hats. Would you believe it if I told you that our celebrated socialist millionaire who has carried a Labour Party card for the past 35 years has been paying money out of this company into the Tory party? No, I wouldn't. You may have to. Don't jump to conclusions, John. It's very neat, isn't it? Contributions paid to one of the party's local suburban agents. No questions asked. And cloth-capped Caswell keeps his topper shiny. Well, we've only looked into the past three years. I wonder how long it's been going on. Five years. What? The payments began in 61. I authorize them. Father knows nothing about them. He's no wizard of counts. Five years. At five thousand pounds a year, that's five, twenty-five thousand pounds. Ah, it was only three and a half thousand for the first two years, and I upped it. No receipts. Oh, no receipts. No, we make the checks out to Milton, this agent, personally. He pushes them through to central office, and they confirm. Verbally. Verbally. Shareholders keep out. Mostly, they'd approve. It's in the company's interest. But you haven't asked them to find out whether they do. No. And you did this all on your own? All on my own. I'm sure Wilder's not behind it. My very own idea, Kenneth. Mm, See, one learns to assume that he's behind everything. And tries to work out why he should be. I wear two hats. And I keep my work and my politics strictly apart. Though I never mind taking on a political account if I agree with the politics behind it. Or even if you don't. If you don't mind my saying so, that's a cynical view of my profession. PR isn't a skunk. More sort of deodorant. John did ask my advice professionally, whether I, in his position, would uh, stop the payments from now on. He knows you're well up in the party. And in my profession. And you said let them go on. In the firm's interest. Because mm -hmm. he may see an advantage in having me a declared Tory in a company where my father's known to be Labour. You know, cancel each other out with him all mightily placed above party and everything. He might. I see an advantage for the party. Yes. Big business has more political talent than the Lords and Commons put together. But the talent, generally speaking, hasn't the time. You, uh, for a while anyway, it seems to me, have. For a while? For as long as the heavyweight bout lasts. Long enough, I'd say, to see you onto the party's civil engineering study group where you'd be invaluable. And as a candidate for the constituency where I live. The sitting member, he's retiring. Or will be retired. Or chopped? It's very sad. Sad? A figure of speech, uh, he'll go. Mm. Does he know? In his heart of hearts, uh, probably, yes. We recently did um, a market research piece on the constituency where I live. From it, we got our ICP. ICP? Our ideal candidate profile. Ah, oh, I see. And you're it. You meet it in just about every respect. You're perfect. <laughs> you make me feel like Saint Kenneth. Right age group, 35, 45, happily married. Hmm? Well, you are, aren't you? Well, yes, but how do you know? With children. Two. Solid C of E? Uh, well, I think I am. I know you are. I never go. We can always restart. You should work for Billy Graham. I'm responsible only to Ted. Which reminds me, I must arrange for you to meet him. You'll be impressed.
What are their names, Don? Well, the thin one's Bernard. Bernard? Sir? Put that over here. Yes, sir. Well, we all can see it. John is out, Mr. Bly. When do you expect him? He's on his way back from the export board. Hmm. Ah. Do you need a compass, Caswell? Oh, I shan't keep you long, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Henderson. Come in, Don. Thank you. I can give you five minutes, Caswell. Uh, two will suffice. Now, this auditor, Davis, I gather he's looking for something in particular. Gather what you like. It's a special audit. If you see any sinister implications, that's up to you and your conscience. Not up to me or mine. The special audit is over. I've just instructed Pixon to close the books to your man until further notice. Well, it may be too late. I think this is the one we want. What? Well, you mean check on him now? You have no, nothing more urgent to do? Oh, no, not really. Well? Well, he's so bloody futile, John. Hmm? Well, I mean, he's like working for the Missing Persons Bureau. Only the salary is better, huh? The money doesn't enter into it. Well, are you going or aren't you? Well, it'll still be a waste of time. Dar. I never had to give you reasons once. And I'm not going to start now. But it is lunchtime. You might prefer to delay it till this evening. I have a dinner date tonight. Then put it off. With Pamela. I see. She's in town. On her own. And she has no need to be. But since you can't do it this evening, you might care to deal with that now. Hadn't you? Yes? Mr. Kenneth Bly telephones, Sir John. He has a most important engagement out of town this evening and won't be available for the planning meeting this afternoon. I see. Thank you. It's what they call a wine and cheese party. They charge a guinea a head and give the proceeds to party funds. Uh, being a Tory politician's wife means washing Gorgonzola down with Beaujolais and you stick to business. Or try labour. Oh, well, then it would be bread and water. <laughs> Could be one of Wilder's tricks. I must say, you never look much of a politician to me. Oh, no, I think Packard's right. He knows talent when he sees it. Mm. I mean, we'll look round the House of Commons. How many of them look the part? Never I go, there are never more than six of them there. And they're all asleep. Well, Packard's got his head screwed on. He carries a lot of weight. You're not swallowing all that publicity man stuff, are you? Or was it? What? Those three initials. ICP. Ideal candidate profile. Sounds like a male model. <laughs> you better bring the first aid kit. Mm -hmm. For when the Primrose League ladies start fainting. Oh, let them. I shall concentrate on those young conservative birds with a mating urge. From what I hear, the Dolce Vita's just about as tame as a banned TV program in their eyes. So I said, no, I'm dining Pamela tonight. And he wept all the way to Notting Hill Gate. He's shockproof. <laughs> Don't you believe it, Don? John would be shocked if you were to leave him. Which is what you're thinking of doing. You know, in the, in the old days at Scott Furlong, one could always feel that however dirty the game, one could always feel that he was responsible for 12,000 men's jobs. That's not flannel, he was. Now it's mostly casual labor, like people from another planet. And the end product's light years away. Much farther off than when we were making aeroplanes. Have you told him? Hmm? How you feel? Well, not in so many words. Thought you hadn't. I could tell him now. I'm in the mood. Thank 
you, thank you very much. I promise not to keep you from your pleasures and to say as few words as possible. But it does give me an opportunity to thank you all for the quite splendid support you have given and are continuing to give to my dear wife and myself in this, my latest term as your member. I have always thought of our constituency as an example. And I have no doubt that if we go on working together for the Conservative Party in this way, and here I must thank our kind host, Alan Norton. Yeah, yeah. 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 If we go on working together in this way, rallying behind our leader, forgetting our sectional differences, we shall not only get them out, but keep them out for many years to come. Yeah. 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 I do see what we mean, Mr. Well, uh, yes, he's consistent. Same old load every time. He doesn't know whether it's Christmas morning or the lunch break. <laughs> He'll hang around for another ten minutes, then slide off. You know what he's managed to do? Almost single-handed, he's turned the seat from safe to marginal. Would you like to know? Oh, thank you very much. I'd better go over and tell him how good he was. Yes, please do. I haven't got the stomach for it, much yet. Something like I don't know. <laughs> Howard, he has a fool. I say, Mr. Norton, I believe you have a fool. Straight the way through to go and help yourself. Come on, man. Perhaps we can have a little swim, shall we? Yes, I will. Do you have a pool, Mr. Bly? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, the more trouble than I'm worth, I sometimes think. All the go around here, though. Dick Timmins started it. 35,000 gallons his. Then Jock Wrigley put one in. You probably know him. Company doctor. 40,000 gallons. <laughs> Mine is 50,000. Do come through. Oh, there we are. It costs more than I care to think about now, I can tell you. You've done much public speaking, Mr. Blair? Um, oh, on and off. I was an instructor for a time in the RE. Oh, the RE, eh? Did you like it? Well, um, it was only national service. Ah, yes. There's the trouble with our party. Too many blasted officers miss politicians living in the past. Yes. Just don't bother about her, Mr. Bly. She's one of the husband hunters. She's going the wrong way about it, of course. Her mother's one of those who's always on about cleaning up entertainment. Where do you stand on women's rights, Mr. Bly, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, same darling. With no mermaids around, I think you'd make a jolly good MC. In fact, better than me, I know. Uh, and you know them all? I know two. Mm, one of those any since tonight. <laughs> I thought he looked unhappy with all those knives in his back. Do you think he knew? We'd well, have to be anesthetized not to. <laughs> you can buy me a bulletproof waistcoat for my birthday. <laughs> Kenneth Bly, MP. Well, I may lose him the seat. Not you, darling. As the man said, you're the ideal candidate in profile. <laughs> he must have gone to bed. Yes. I'll just look at the children. Ah, thank you. I wondered when you'd be back. Father, you all right? Pour me one. Justine! She's looking at the children. Well, they're sound asleep, I've just looked. Well? Well, cheers. You know why I'm here? A bit late for guessing games, Father. You've been authorizing payments behind my back to the Tories. Well? Well, put that way, you make it sound like some terrible fiddle. You know what I think of that lot? Well, it's obviously being put around that I'm responsible. You're unsullied. Mm. You'll be telling me next that it's an insurance premium for Blythe. One could see it that way, yes. Cass, whatever's wrong? Ah, oh, he's all right. He never comes here when he's sick, only when he's rude with health and looking for someone to club. <laughs> I'll get your nightcap. No, no, this will do splendidly. I just want a word or two with Can You get off to bed. It's very late. It's too late, Cass, for a business brawl. Leave us, Justine. I'll get your room ready. You will... No, no, no. I'm not staying. All right. Ten minutes. And I'll be back. 
Came from Wilder, didn't it? Never mind. You were privy to the audit, knowing that Wilder was skeleton hunting. Hmm, what a skeleton. Well, the board left something to say. The board haven't opened their tight little mouths for years. They're your performing seals. And now they're becoming Wilders. It's not so much that you made these payments that counts, but that you were such a fool as to let Wilder find out about them. You showed him the cupboard and gave him the key. He wasn't looking for contributions to the Tory party. No? <laughs> what then? He's after a bigger skeleton. Your war record. Or rather, Bly's. He knows Bly Construction Limited was a war baby. Nurtured on government milk. He's digging, Father. Guided by you. It sounds like you. It's too much, isn't it, for me to have built Bly's from scratch? It wasn't me, it was the war. Ken. When are you going to stop trying to compensate for the silver spoon I put in your mouth? He's looking for your wartime clerk of work, Stan Calder. He thinks you're still paying him off for his silence. Does he? Which you are, so you can drop this fake indignation about the payments I've made. You made the last of those. Your political friends can sing land of hope and glory somewhere else and take their begging bowl with them. Good night, Justine. Bigthorn, Bly speaking. How are you getting on with the auditor, Davis, that Sir John brought in? Yes, I know that. But you may reopen the books to him now. Yes, yes, immediately. I, I gather that uh, Sir John was concerned about the identity of Stanley Calder. You remember him. He, he left some time ago. Yes, that's right. Uh, you might uh, ease Davis's job by pointing out the payments that we've made to Calder. Fine. Goodbye. This is from Mr. Davis, Sir John. He said he wanted to see it immediately. Thank you, Miss Ingar. Well, here we are, Don. Oh, not another. See for yourself. He's sure of this one. I thought Caswell had closed the books to him. Well, he's thought better of it. Today, Don, if you haven't got a prior luncheon engagement with Pamela. You know, it's like being hired to hunt some ghost. That one is in hole, and the sun is out. So, if you don't mind. Don, if you find working with me so distasteful, Pamela has some idea that I'm maltreating you. Yes, well, I usually project some kind of disillusion after three brandies, John. Pamela and you ought to form a society. Martyrs Anonymous. I'll phone you from home. That's much more like it, Don. Oh, do come in, Caswell. Good morning. Any more of this, they'll take us for the Science Museum. Or was it your idea? Partly. With your other hat on. Hmm. The schoolboy's own exhibition. Oh, morning, Don. You going? Morning, back out. Morning. No, John felt I looked pale and needed a day by the sea. Oh. Well, don't get out of your depth. The storm cones are hoisted, according to the BBC. They usually are. 
Don't be too put off by last night. How well do you know the Shadow Minister? Dempsey? Oh, we're old friends. I'd like to meet him after you. Should there be an election and we win, he'd have the power of appointment to the National Export Board and the power to choose who should leave it, which on the face of it would be uh, either your father or Sir John. You realize that? It had occurred to me, yes. And you would like to advise or help him to a decision? As a public service. Which way? Oh, the way that was best in the public interest. Pity. Hmm? That you're torn between family and conviction. Well, aren't you even more? Your hats, I mean. Today I'm bareheaded. Mm. So your client never wears a hat either. My client is Bly Construction Limited. No, your client is Wilder, and don't forget it. Oh, I don't mind, Jeffrey. It's perfectly acceptable to me. For the time being. Uh, when would you like to meet Dempsey? Oh, any time, Jeffrey. Sooner the better. As members of the NEB, you and I depend on the minister's goodwill. Now, if it gets about that Blyze has been making contribution to the Tory party, he might want to know why. So, we should stop any further payments? You should, as joint managing director. Well, then let's see what the other joint managing director has to say about it. Miss Lingard? Yes, Sir John? Would you ask Mr. Kenneth to come along, please? I mean, we're not a one-man band anymore, are we? I think I know what it's about. Well, no surprise intended, Ken. John has something to say which I entirely support. These payments to the Conservative Party through the local party agent, Kenneth, they'll have to end. That's about it. Very well. It's short-sighted, but one's used to myopia here. I'm sorry if it upsets some of your more personal plans. Oh, it may, in the long run upset both of yours. Kenneth, don't we have some things to attend to concerning the business of this company more than its politics? Have we? Yes, I think so. A little time to settle them, if you don't mind, Caswell. No, I don't mind. Drink? Oh, um, usual, thanks. Your father has cast me in the role of spoil sport. I am the one to stop these payments. You know why? Oh, search me. No accounting for father's tactics. Come off it, Kenneth. You do know why. Hmm? I said, you know. Well, I suppose it has to do with both of you being on the export board and that the minister with powers to appoint to the board or remove members from it is like my father Labour. Then why hasn't Caswell taken the credit for stopping uh, uh, these payments, yours, ours, to the Tory party? I long ago gave up trying to work out how his mind works. Caswell is determined to stay on the export board. Under Labour now, under the Tories in the future if they get in. He knows the score. He knows that polit politics are becoming much more professional. Political adversaries hate each other less than those that don't declare themselves. The armed neutrals, like myself, stay off the bandwagons and one or other will try and run you down. And this way he gains because he's openly Labour. Yet you'd be the one who chopped Bly's payments to the Tories. Well, I know the present minister as well as he does. I don't know the shadow minister. I haven't met him either. Yet. I see Packard's been getting his hats mixed up. Oh. Merely sorting them out. The shadow minister is worth cultivating by you at the present. Not by me. 
If that's all, John. As events have made clear, Kenneth, your father is no genius when it comes to itemized accounts. You will stop those payments to the local agent. But you may find that Bly Construction may form a trust by which the same amount as before will find itself going to the Tory central office. You could even up it if you like to seven and a half thousand, so the plies wouldn't appear niggardly. Authorized by me? Whenever you like. And by you? Well, I'm good at figures one day, and very bad the next. It depends which government is in. Or out. You pick your fancy, and you back it. While you back the field. Well, that's the privilege of the neutral killer. Hello, Betty. Is Lady Wilder back yet? Oh, I see. Well, uh, when is she expected? Oh, not until tomorrow evening. All right. Goodbye, Betty. I saw your lights were on. I was just catching up. I thought perhaps we might go out for a quick one. Uh, not tonight, thank you, Kenneth. I've given some thought to it, John. Hmm? Your trust fund idea. Ah, uh, yes. It's fair. I'll go along with it. Good. You'll be a right honourable yet. Good evening, Don. Good night, Kenneth. Good night, Don. If you've come to continue the painful complaint you started on the telephone, you're wasting your breath. He was gaga, John. Gaga! So you said. An old man, more dead than alive, and you have me hunting him. How was I to know that? Well, Caswell knew. Caswell seen him. I bet he had. The old man's daughter thinks that Caswell is some kind of saint. Good night, Don. Eight thirty tomorrow morning, Don. Well, you could have checked with Caswell. The old man didn't even know he was alive, let alone having remembered that he was a clerk of works. Imperial engineering boys are hot on. We shall have to be on our toes tomorrow morning at 8.30. Well, I won't be there! Don? They won't all go in there, you know. How about a drink? Uh, not here, I mean over the road at the King's Head. I mean, I can't let you walk out on me without having a drink. Hmm? Remind me to have something done about that monstrosity in the morning, Don. That's going upstairs, whether he likes it or not. <laughs>